So this is called Fourier's law of heat transfer, conduction transfer. So Fourier's law tells us that the heat transfer in the form of conduction is correlated in the, is uh, correlated with the conductivity of the material. K is a measure of the ability of a material to conduct heat. A is a temperature gradient, the slope of the temperature curve on a Tx diagram, T versus X. And A is the cross-sectional area of the wall. So A is this area, for example. So let's say inside is, is the back side, and outside of the wall of the room is, 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 is the front side. So here we have outside of the house, and on the back side we have inside of the house, inside of the room. So the area that you use is the width times the height. And um, conductivity, as I said, is a is a thermophysical property of a material. For different materials, we have different conductivity value. For diamond, we have a very large conductivity that is very interesting. For silver, we have a good conductivity. Copper, gold, aluminum. Copper is a very good conductive. Mercury, very small. But air, look at air. It's very small. And why? The very simple answer to this question that why air has a low conductivity compared to uh, diamond or, or copper or iron is because the, dif the distance between air molecules are very large compared to the distance between the molecules and particles inside aluminium or iron medium. That's why. So inside metal media, we have much dense and packed form of molecule, molecules next to each other than inside the air. So the chances of the chance of collision between the air molecules is much less than chance of collisions between and direct interactions between copper molecules or gold molecules. And that's why. So this is a very simple reason. So this is a conductivity. Conductivity has a unit of watt per meter degree Celsius or watt per meter degree Kelvin. It's gonna be the same. So if I give you, or if you read the properties at what, as watt per meter degree Celsius, and in another table, you see properties of the diamond in watt per meter degree Kelvin, the values must be exactly the same. The values must be exactly the same. Because here in this equation you see, K is here. This equation is about the difference, is about the temperature difference. So, and since the difference of one unit of temperature in Kelvin scale and degree Celsius scales are the same, K in watt per meter degree Kelvin and K in watt per meter degree Celsius are the same. So this is the scale and unit of the conductivity. Now, what is the unit of this Q, Q dot? This is actually watt. So it has a power unit. K is watt per meter, watt per meter Kelvin or watt per meter degree Celsius. A has a unit of meter square, and dt over dx has a unit of degree Celsius per meter. And you see that meter and the meters gonna cancel out. Uh, the temperature, the unit is gonna cancel out by the temperature the scale in K. And eventually the unit of this is gonna be what? If you divide it by A, so if you divide this equation by A and just write negative K times dt over dx, what you get is the conduction transfer in what unit? So in what instead of, instead of uh, 
uh, I'm sorry, what parameter is square instead of what? So look at uh, the thermal conductivity changes as we change the materials and also uh, uh, different metals. So as you can see in here, the pure metals have a very good range of conductivity. Fibers and insulators are very low in conductivity. And that's why we use these materials to insulate houses, systems, some part of the power plants, and gases also have a very low conductivity. There is one more concept, and it's called thermal diffusivity. The, what is thermal diffusivity, and how is it related to the thermal conductivity? So let's first talk about these few properties. CP, CP is a specific heat, joule per kilogram degree Celsius. This is a heat capacity per unit mass. If I multiply it by density, it gives you heat capacity. So if I multiply uh, a specific heat by density, it gives me heat capacity and has a unit of joule per meter cube degree Celsius. This is heat capacity per unit volume. What is this rho CP? Rho CP is basically the ability of the material to keep the energy inside, to store the energy. To store the energy and not give it to the surrounding. So it's about gaining, gaining thermal energy and keeping inside and storing inside. Thermal diffusivity is defined as this heat conduction divided by heat storage, K over rho Cp. This is rho and this is C sub P. And has a unit of meter square per second. Thermal diffusivity is basically the, the ratio of how much the substance in materials tends to respond to temperature difference versus how much it tends to keep the energy inside. So when the alpha is high, it means the material tends to transfer the energy, let the energy go and try and be transmitted sort of through the material instead of keeping it inside. But when the alpha is smaller, it means the material and the substance and that medium tends to keep when, when, tends to keep and gain and absorb the energy rather than just let it go. So that's the some that's the simple concept behind the thermal diffusivity. And you see the values for the thermal diffusivity at the end of your book. And I I put a copy uh, table containing uh, this value to here. The other form of heat transfer, that was about conduction. The other form of heat transfer is convection heat transfer. Convection is very interesting because when you look at the convection, you already need to know about conduction. So convection, as you can see in here, is the mood of energy transfer between a solid surface and adjacent liquid or gas that is in motion and it involves the combined effects of conduction and fluid motion. So why is that? So look at this picture. In this picture, when you have heat transfer, when you see the boiling, when you see the motions of the fluid inside, where is it coming from? First of all, as a result of the contact between the flame and the bottom part of this pot, there is gonna be heat transfer to the pot, okay? And this is as a result of radiation and convection and conduction. Now, look at what ha what's happening at the bottom of the, at the surface, at the upper surface of the 
bottom of the pot and the fluid inside. So the surface is already hot in here, right? And the fluid next to it, above it, also gets heated because the surface is hot. And since it's heated, so this is this very first mechanism is conduction. Why? There is a in, in there is a direct interactions between there is a direct interactions between the molecules of the pot and molecules of the fluid inside the pot. So there is a direct interaction between two different mediums. When the molecules of the water or any other fluids inside, these or soup or any other food inside the pot is, is heated, are heated, they, the density decreases, right? They get lighter and they tend to move up. When there is, when they tend to, when they move up, they have to be replaced because we're going to have, we cannot, otherwise we're going to have, per, as a pressure, uh, 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 other, we're going to have, we're going to have actually cavity. So because of the pressure difference, they have to be replaced. They are, they are going to be replaced. So they are replaced by the other parts of the fluid that are colder. So again, they also get heated as a result of direct contact between the molecules of the fluid and the bottom part of the pot, and they go up. So we have these sort of circulations and motions. This motion is called, this motion is called advection, advection or bulk motion. That direct interaction between the surface and the fluid is called conduction or diffusion. That's why we say whenever you want to have conviction, the very first mechanism is conduction. So the very the basic mechanism is in conduction is conduction. The in convection is conduction. So convection is as a result of having diffusion, other name for conduction, plus advection that is also called bulk motion. Conviction that can happen in different forms, in force conviction, in force form or natural form. Natural form is here. Let's say you have a hot egg and you put it on, on the table. The air around it gets heated and they tend to move up and they're going to be replaced by colder air next to them, colder air particles. And this is what we're going to have. So we have a motion of the we have the motion of the fluid. This motion is called advection or bulk motion. And this direct interaction between air molecules at the surface of the hot egg and the hot egg surface is called conduction. The combination of that is called conviction is natural conviction. But if you, if you put a fan in here and you force the fluid to move over the hot egg surface, then you're basically accelerating this mechanism of heat transfer, cooling down the hot egg. So in this process, the hot egg is going to be cooled down faster than this case. This is called force convection. So force convection is sort of more efficient in most cases. And it depends on what applications we want to use these convection transfer mechanism. Sometimes we prefer natural and sometimes Force, but force has higher rate for the same situation than the natural conviction. Now, for the conduction transfer, we use Fourier's law of the, the heat transfer and Fourier's laws of Fourier's law of conduction to calculate the rate of heat transfer in watts, in power unit. Or if you divide it by a, you are going to get joule or energy unit or kilojoule. What about the conviction? For the conviction, we use Newton's law of cooling. Newton's law of cooling is a little bit different from the conviction, conduction transfer equation. Over there, we had K. Now we have H and they have totally different, they have different units. I don't want to say totally. Here we had A. Here also we have A, although they are related to a totally different area in most cases. 
Here we had temperature gradient, dt over dx is called temperature gradient in x direction. Here we have only temperature difference. Temperature of the surface minus temperature of the fluid above it times the area through which we have heat transfer, like area of the hot egg, outer surface area of the hot egg, and H that is called convection transfer coefficient. The unit is what? But what are those variables? H is convection transfer coefficient watt per meter square degree Celsius. Okay. So it's different from K because K has a you had it here, K had a unit of watt per meter Kelvin or watt per meter Celsius, not meter square, but H has a unit of watt per meter square degree Celsius. Area is the surface area through which convection transfer is happening. And TS temperatures, surface temperature and T infinity temperature of the fluid away from the surface. H is not like K. It doesn't have the same unit as K does. And also, you remember that K was a part of a thermophysical properties of a fluid or uh, not the fluid, any matter, any substance, fluid or solid or gases. K is a property of the material and it depends on the temperature and pressure and other uh, conditions, states that every state can be defined by. So it depends on the materials only. And the temperatures at each, the materials is located at. But for convection, we don't have this. For convection transfer coefficient or H, we have a combination of different effects. It is a it is a, it is a, uh, it, it depends on the fluid. It's not just totally depending on the fluid. It depends on the velocity of the fluid. It depends on the geometry of the surface and nature of the motion. So it depends on how the fluid is moving, what type of fluid we have. So it depends on fluid properties in part also and fluid bulk velocity, how fast the whole uh, fluid is moving, the geometry of the surface, everything. So H cannot be tabulated just as a function of the fluid. When we want to look for H, we need to, we need to know what temperature that fluid is located at, what pressure, what geometry we are looking at. If the air is moving over X surface, or over a flat surface like a table that is hot. So even for the same fluid and the same temperature, the type of the surface also have a, has a very significant role on defining the value of the H. Let's solve one example. Air at 20 degrees Celsius with a convection transfer coefficient of 25 watt per meter square Kelvin flows over uh, the blows over a horizontal steel hot plate that has a conductivity of 43 watt per meter Kelvin. The surface area of the plate is 0.38 meter square. And uh, with a thickness of, with a thickness of two centimeter. So this thickness is two centimeter. The conductivity of the steel plate is also given the material of the steel. The plate surface is maintained at a constant temperature of T sub S equal to T sub S equal to 250 degrees Celsius. And the plate and the plate does uh, so let me increase the font. And the plate loses 300 watt from surface by radiation. Calculate the inside plate temperature, or basically the lower part of the plate temperature. How do we calculate this? So what we're going to do is using the energy conservation equation, very simple form. Why? Because we know that from the top surface, we are losing 300 as a result of radiating to the surround. We're going to talk about the radiation shortly. Also, air is flowing. It means also 
we have convection transfer between air and the upper part of the steel plate. So if you want to keep the temperature at this uh, pre-specified value, what should be the temperature at the bottom to keep this at this value? So we have conduction flow inside the steel plate through the sickness, and also we have convection outside and radiation outside. This is how I write the energy balance. So if it's a steady state, whatever that is coming must be leaving. Let's look at this surface. What is coming? The, what is coming is actually the conduction, conduction transfer from the from the lower area to the upper side. What else do I have? I also have, because the surface temperature is larger than air temperature, I also am losing convection transfer to the air. Also, since I have radiation toward the surrounding, I'm also losing radiation transfer in the, uh, with the value of 300 watt to the surrounding. So conduction is coming, convection is leaving, radiation is leaving. So this is input to the surface, these two are outlet to the surface. What is convection? Convection is H times area times Ts minus T infinity. Surface temperature is 250, air temperature is 20, what is the area? Area is upper area of this, and uh, it's given at 0.38 meters square. H is also given at 25 watt per meter square Kelvin. And if you look at the units, you see that final unit is going to be in what? 2185. So this is how much we are losing from the upper surface to the air in the form of convection heat transfer. What about the radiation? Radiation, we don't have an equation for that and we don't need because it's already given in the problem statement. It says that we are losing 300 watt in the form of radiation it transfer to the outside. So this is also what I'm losing. Now I'm asked to calculate the temperature at the lower part. So if I want to calculate the temperature at the lower part, first I need to know how is it correlated to this energy balance, to this energy equ conservation equation. So energy that is coming is in the form of, from the lower side to the upper side, is in the form of conduction it transfer. Okay, what is conduction? Conduction is temperature difference between upper surface and lower surface times the conductivity of the steel plate times the divided by thickness. Okay, and times the area that is already given. Okay, 0.38 meters squared. This is upper surface or lower surface. So my conductivity, convection, conduction transfer equation is this. K times A minus Ti minus T, T times Ti minus Ts. Temperature difference divided by thickness. You see, I didn't just use the negative value. I'm just minus sign that we had in this equation because I just want to get the magnitude. You remember that when I write the conservation of equation in the form that is written in here, I need to just work with the magnitude and forget about the sign. So I need to have everything in positive form. I'm sorry, in a, with a positive sign. So conductivity is temperature from uh, at the lower part minus upper part divided by thickness times K times area. Whatever this is must be equal to convection plus radiation. So 2185 plus 300 watt. Or in total, it's going to be 2485 watt. This is my convection. It is, this, is, this, is, this should be my conduction transfer rate. Ts is given, temperature, surface is given, 2050, 250 degrees Celsius, conductivity is given, area is given. 
So the unknown is only Ti. If I rearrange this equation, I get Ti as 253 degree Celsius. Please redo all this example at home so uh, you will make sure that you know how to do it if, if you are given different values for conductivity, convection transfer, temperatures, or even different, uh, uh, different form of surface. So here, this is a problem. Uh, this is a practice problem that you are assigned to solve for and upload it on Blackboard. And the solution is going to be uploaded after the due date. Air at 20 degrees Celsius with a convection transfer coefficient of 20 watt per meter squared. This is power, by the way. Okay. So this is, let me just make sure that you guys keep in mind that this is power. 20 watt per meter squared Kelvin over a pond. The surface temperature of the pond is at 40 degrees Celsius. So it's like we have a surface, like a solid surface at 40, and we have a gas flowing over it at 20 degrees Celsius. How much convection transfer you have? Determine the heat flux between the surface of the pond and the earth. So what is heat flux? Heat flux is whatever that you see in here divided by area. Because the unit of this in the sky, in the sky unit is, is watt. When we divide it by area, it's going to be watt per meter square. Watt per meter square or power per uh, unit surface area is called flux, heat flux. The same for here. If you remove the A, you're, you're going to have minus negative K dt over dx. That's going to be heat flux, conduction heat transfer heat flux. So heat flux is this equation divided by area, or this equation divided by area. So you don't have to consider area in, in this problem, and you are also not given the map surface area, because this is a huge pond, and you want to calculate the per unit area. The other practice problem that I want to assign you is this. So you have a inner and outer surface of a four meter times seven meter brick wall of thickness 30 centimeter. So this is the thickness. The these four meter and seven meter are these dimension, height and the widths. Four meter times seven, meter times seven meter brick wall of thickness 30 centimeter. So this is 30 centimeter, that is thickness, and thermal conductivity of 0.69 watt per meter Kelvin are maintained at temperatures of 26 degrees Celsius and eight degrees Celsius. What is the rate of heat transfer through the wall in watts? Okay. Now, we're going to go to another form of heat transfer, and that is called radiation heat transfer. So that mechanism is radiation. Radiation is as a result of electromagnetic waves that are also called photons. So photons causes the heat or thermal energy exchange between two objects, two surfaces. And this is very interesting and very important. Keep in mind that any medium, any substance, any surface, any volume, area, gas, liquid, solid, at a temperature larger than zero, zero Kelvin, emits thermal radiation. So any object at a temperature larger than zero Kelvin emits thermal radiation, any surface. What does that mean? It means our body radiates towards the building or walls around us, the doors and windows, everything that are surrounding us. And windows also radiating toward our body. So there's also, there's always a mutual 
form of heat transfer is not just from one side to the other, but the net is always from, so the net can be from higher temperature to lower temperature and depends on the orientation. So it depends on how you are oriented, oriented with respect to, to the window in your room, the walls, the doors, the building in front of you. How do we calculate it? The emission emit, the maximum emission by a surface can be calculated according to this equation that is called a Stefan Boltzmann equation. A Stefan Boltzmann equation. Okay. A Stefan Boltzmann law tells us, what does it tell us? Tell us? It tells us the maximum amount of emission by a surface at certain temperature, not actual one. So when you use a Stefan Boltzmann equation for a table, for example, in your, at your home, you're, you have a table, like a large table, and the surface area of that is like, say, two meters square. And you know the temperature that is 200 degree Kelvin. I'm sorry, 300 degree Kelvin. You use the Stefan Boltzmann constant that is given in here. Multiply it by the area of the table, multiply it by the temperature of the table to the power four. Then your result is going to be in what? In what? So that's the amount of energy that max, maximum amount of energy can be emitted by the table at your home. But what is the actual one? And what does that mean when we say maximum? We say maximum because, because this is the amount of energy, this is the amount of energy that a surface can emit if that surface is, a, is an is ideal surface. What is ideal surface? Ideal surface is a black body. And the black body does not exist in the universe. The black body is ideal, idealized surface that emits radiation at the maximum rate. Okay. And by the way, look at this unit. So the Stefan Boltzmann constant has a unit of watt per meter square times Kelvin Q4. Um, here, this is going to be Kelvin 4. Area is going to be meter square, like in a sky, in a sky unit. So meter square cancel out by meter square. Temperature 4 cancel out by Kelvin 4. And the final unit is going to be watt. Okay. So this is the unit for Stefan Boltzmann constant. But for maxim, for, for actual surfaces, this is what we have. For actual surfaces, we have this equation. What's the difference? The difference here is for this one, you have, for this one, you don't have epsilon or anything. Actual surfaces, actually, actual surfaces, real surfaces, emits only a fraction of this maximum amount that an idealized surface or ideal surface can emit that does not exist. So we need to multiply previous equation by a fraction. That fraction is called emissivity and is unitless, so it's dimensionless, it's a fraction. Emissivity is a measure of how closely a surface approximates a black body for which epsilon is one. So epsilon for actual and real surfaces are between zero and one, are between zero and one. And here you see different materials at 300 Kelvin, with different emissivities. So emissivity also depends on the temperature. These are the, ten, these are the emissivities for materials at 300 Kelvin only. So it depends on the temperature. Aluminium foil, uh, polished copper, polished gold, red brick, human skin has a pretty large emissivity, our skin. So V emits energy uh, significantly. But also, obviously, the total amount it depends on the depends on the temperature of our body. So this is for actual surfaces emission by actual surface. This is ideal surface. Ideal surface, black surface, is a very good reference when they want to, when we want to calculate the actual surface in the radiation mechanism. 
So what happens when radiation meets a body or fluid? What happens with that radiation? Let's say this is the amount of radiation that we receive, Q dot. Part of that is going to be reflected. So part of that is reflected. Part of that is going to be absorbed by the absorbed by the surface. So it's going to be absorbed and it's going to be stored there. So it results in the increased temperature of the object. Part of that, let's say you have a glass object and is transparent. So part of that can be trans transmitted through the transmitted through the surface, through the solid object. So in total, whatever that you receive, this is not about emission, this is about whatever that you receive. Part of that is absorbed, part of that reflected, part of that transmitted. Or if I divide both sides by the total amount that you receive, I get this. I get these three ratios. This is called absorptivity or alpha. The second one is called reflectivity or rho, and the third one, transmissivity or tau. This tells you what fraction of the received energy or incident radiation or irradiation is absorbed. The second one, rho, tells you what percentage or what fraction of the received energy or incident radiation or irradiation is going to be, let me write this in here. So incident radiation or irradiation. So there are different names for, for this Q that we receive in here. What fraction of that is transmitted? So the third one tells you how much, what person, the second one, the fraction of the receiving energy that is reflected like a mirror. So we expect mirror to have a very large reflectivity. And tau tells you how much of that can, transmit, can be transmitted and travel through the material and go to the other side of the subject, of, the, of that object. And these, all three ones, all of them have value between zero and one. If you have opaque material, so if the surface or the object is opaque, then the transmissivity or this is zero. Why? Because it doesn't let the light to go through or pass through, travel through the, the object. Okay, so this is also very interesting. Opaque material, alpha is zero, so alpha tau is zero, and alpha plus rho is equal to one. There is one more equation in terms of radiation. Let's say, so we talked about how much a surface can radiate energy. When it's a black body, it, we use this equation. When it's not a black body, we use this equation. But it doesn't tell us about how much is their net exchange between two surfaces, two objects. To do this, we need to make some assumptions and do some simplifications. And according to this, we come up with this equation. This is very interesting and use, useful equation. This gives you the net, the net rate of radiation between two surfaces. Let's say you have a, you have a table inside the house um, inside the room, and obviously the table is surrounded by the whole surrounding, the wall, the, the, the walls, the, the, the ceiling, the, the windows, the carpet, and uh, everything is surrounded. I mean, when we are talking about the upper part of the upper surface of the table, you don't consider the carpet really. So, when you want to calculate this, when a surface is completely enclosed by a much larger or black surface at a temperature, T sub surrounding separated by a gas such as air. So let's say you have air in here that does not 
interfere with the radiation between those two. So let's assume that error basically does not, that does, does not exist. Then the net radiation is calculated using this equation. Epsilon, the emissivity of the surface, not the surrounding, times the Stefan Boltzmann constant, times the area of the surface, times the temperature of the surface to the power of four, minus temperature of the surrounding to the power of four. And this one has a unit of one. Now, as a last exercise, we're gonna do this. We're gonna solve for this example. So you have single pane window and also double pane window. Okay, let me put it in here. Single pane and double pane window. We're gonna see what form of mechanism we have for each type of window, okay? So when you have single pane, when you have single pane, what you have is the, so you have outside obviously, and you have, I wanna use one of those shapes in here to demonstrate the mechanism. So we wanna see what form of mechanism, heat transfer mechanism we have. When you have single pane, let's say this is outside and this is inside. When you have single pane, from the surface, outer surface to the surrounding, you have radiation. Okay, so the first one is radiation to the outside. Also, there is typically when we calculate the radiation, we, we take into consideration the radiation, we, we consider the sun totally separately. Also, there is a radiation from the sun towards the surface. So this is, this, this is the radiation, let's say net radiation between the surface, outer surface of the window and surrounding, surrounding. What do I mean by surrounding? When I say surrounding, I don't mean, I don't mean sun. I don't mean the sky. I mean, basically the whole environment surrounding the building or surrounding the window that, that can be considered as a surrounding, like windows of the other, other building, the, the, the building around these windows, all the walls, all the materials outside that can exchange heat with this surface. So this is the, heat transfer exchange in the form of radiation with the outer surface, between the outer surface and the surround. And this is radiation from the sun toward the surface. What else? I have also convection, right? Because outside I have air. So there is also heat transfer. Let's say the net is from the surface to the surround, or it can be to the, to the, to the outside. It also can be from the outside to the surface. So radiation between the outer surface and the surrounding walls and all the, and also inside we have walls. Outside we have other building. Next building, the neighbors, and the people that are walking in the street or avenues. So, and this is conviction between the surface and the air. What else? The other thing that they have is the conviction inside this window. So from inner window to outer, inner surface to outer surface. So conduction, conduction inside the glass material or whatever the type of the material of the window screen is. What else do I have? I have radiation between the inner parts of the room, like between these walls, the the floor, the side walls, the ceilings, all other objects inside the wall, and the inner surface of the window. So radiation is I have. What else I have? Also I have convection transfer between the air inside, room air, and inner side of the window. So convection, radiation, conduction, radiation, Conviction, radiation from the sun. 
What about the double window? So for double window, what I have, for the outside, I have similar mechanism. Okay, for the outside, I have radiation to the outer, outside to the surrounding walls that are surrounding the building. I have radiation from the sun again. For the surface, I have convection toward the outside or between the surface and the outside. I have conduction between the inner surface and outer surface of the second pane of the window. I have conduction between the inner side and outer side of the first pane of the window. I have also convection inside here. I mean, I can resolve it in two elements. The convection between inner side and outer side of the inner pane with the air in between two layers and the convection between the inner side of the outer layer of the window and the air in, in, in between two layers. So I can, instead of one convection direction, as a result uh, for showing the convection inside this gap, I can use two vectors or two just, two just arrows, not necessarily direction. What else? I have radiation also between these two, these two surfaces. The outer surface of the inner layer and inner surface of the outer layer inside this gap. So radiation between this surface and this surface. What else? I have radiation from the inner, inner walls and the window. I have convection between the inner room air, room air and the inner surface. And that's it. So these are the mechanisms that we have for this schematic. Thank you guys. Make sure you guys review these concepts and do the practice problem and upload them on the Blackboard by the due date. And have a great week.